dear students now we are going to start with our new lecture this is again related to the module 3 which is on alignment design in the previous interaction we started with the horizontal curve and we have looked at the various guidelines which we need to take care of when we are going to design any such curve and towards the end of the previous interaction we talked about the various curve elements like length chord versine offset tangent length etc now we are going to continue with that and we will see that what are the other things which needs to be covered and discussed and then how we are going to find out the radius of a horizontal curve. But before we go for the radius of a horizontal curve one thing which we need to look at is that if you are providing a flat section even on a horizontal curve and the vehicles are moving at a different speed then what is going to happen to those particular vehicles and how if it is being raised with respect to the inner and the outer edge then this is going to make a difference. So, in that direction first of all we will be talking about horizontal curve where a transition has been provided and then we will try to see that what happens if you have a flat cross section or you have a elevated or super elevated cross section wherein one edge of the carriageway is being raised with respect to the another edge and then how it is going to make a difference in terms of the various speeds which are required to be looked at for skidding or overturning. So, let us start with the horizontal curve with a transition. If you see here in this particular diagram what you find is that there is a curve section E D which is horizontal circular curve and beyond that towards the tangent which have been provided here as well as there is a tangent here. So, if you move from E towards the tangent or if you move from D towards the tangent then what you have is T 1 E or you have D T 2 and this is transition curve. So, on either side of the horizontal circular curve we have a transition curve and this transition curve is starting from the tangent line and this tangent line is also nothing but a straight section or a profile which is there of any of the road. So, if you are looking at this and if you remember in the previous interaction we have looked at the similar thing, but only thing is that at that particular time we talked about a simple circular curve which is being depicted by this particular orientation where the curve was starting and ending from the tangent itself. So, there was no transition curve in that. You also remember that this is a deviation angle which is there. So, this deflection angle is required so as to change the direction. So, this is one another thing and there is an angle alpha or this particular angle sorry phi which is being provided here and which talks about that portion where the transition curve is there. Now, when we are looking at this particular geometry then what we found is that the circular curve which otherwise would have been here has been shifted downwards and therefore, there is a shift which can be defined as S and when it is being shifted and it comes between these two points and the connectivity is being provided like this as a transition curve here and a transition curve here. At the center of the transition curve that means, if you are talking about the length of uh, the transition curve as L t here and similarly the length of the transition curve as L t here. So, at the center of that what we are getting is that this is a circular curve, this is a transition curve and this could have been a normal condition. So, we have a shift here and this is being defined as half of the shift here. So, this is a property which is there. So, when we are looking at all of this thing and this deflection angle is there then this total deflection which is happening is actually delta itself. So, if we translate this particular diagram into the elements of this particular combination of curves that is the circular curve and the transition curve the very first thing which we can talk about is the length of the circular curve and this length of the circular curve is actually from E to D. So, this is an arc situation which we are talking about. So, when we are looking at this because the radius is known and that is r the angle which is going to be there here is actually the 
angle which is to be deducted from the deflection angle related to the transition curve on either of the side and that angle is related with the half of the length of the transition curve and at the same time it is being shifted by a half of the shift and that is where this phi angle needs to be identified. So, this phi angle when we say, so this is nothing but half of the length of the transition curve divided by r plus s by 2 where s is the shift. So, when you have this phi angle and you detect this twice of this phi angle from the deflection angle what you have is the angle related to the circular curve and this is what is being used here as delta radians minus 2 phi and this is a in radians and therefore, r into this value is going to give you a value in meters. The another thing is what is going to be the total length of the curve, the total length of the curve is nothing but the length of the circular curve plus the length of the transition curve on either side and that is the reason it is L c plus 2 times of L t. So, if I put it this as L c then this is L c plus 2 times of L t. The tangent length t which we are talking that tangent length t is actually starting from t 1 and going to b. So, this is t 1 b or this can also be b t 2. So, if you are looking at this particular case then what happens is that you have this o t dash t 1 dash and b if you take this particular triangle. So, you have a triangle o t 1 dash b. So, at this triangle then this is a 90 degree angle. So, if you are going with this particular angle then what happens is in this one we are going to find out the total value of t 1 b as t 1 t 1 dash plus t 1 dash b and this t 1 dash b is going to be found out from the geometry of the triangle and what we get is this is r plus s. So, that is the shift which is there with respect to the radius of the circular curve. So, r plus s into tangent of delta by 2 where delta is the deflection angle that is uh, going to be the value of t 1 dash b and t 1 t 1 dash that value is nothing, but this is half of the length of the transition curve. So, hence what we get is r plus s into 10 delta by 2 plus l t by 2. Now, versine m for a circular curve if we are talking then the, this versine is nothing, but it is a deviation between the curve and the chord of that particular curve. So, if you are looking at this one and say this point is being defined as uh, A, so and this point is being defined as B, then we are talking about this A B. This is nothing but this is A B is O B minus O A and O B is radius and O A can be calculated from O A E triangle. So, if you take triangle O a e. So, you have r cos of uh, delta minus 2 phi by 2 if that is being taken then what you are going to get is r minus r cos delta minus 2 phi by 2. So, that is how this value comes out there. Similarly, the offset e at the crest of the circular curve. So, this is what we are talking actually we are talking about uh, sorry uh, here if I put it as b dash is fine. So, this is b dash. Okay. So, now, if you are talking about this offset then this is b b dash. So, offset is b b dash and if you are looking at this offset b b dash then this is how you are going to calculate is like you have the values of a shift you have the values of a, so there is a value of s here this is r. So, what you need is distance here. So, if you are going with this one then this is r is the value which is going to be deducted from uh, the total value of this that is uh, what you get is r divided by cos of delta minus 2 phi by 2. So, this is delta minus 2 phi by 2 is this angle. So, with respect to the circular curve because we are talking about it. So, this is what we get is as uh, the value. Similarly, the chord c of the circular curve. So, if you are talking about this one and that is the way we can also calculate the values for this also. Okay. So, when you are talking about the chord c of the circular curve then this becomes nothing but 2 times of r multiplied by sin of the half of the angle related to the circular curve and that is delta minus 2 phi by 2. 
and this angle L 5 which we are considering here this is uh, half of the length of the transition curve because this is the half of the length L t by 2 and this is going to be at a distance of s by 2 and r. So, this is r plus s by 2 and that is how we are going to get this value in radians and the shift is given by the square of the length of the transition curve divided by 24 r. So, this is the way where we are going to calculate the various elements if a transition curve is also being provided along with the circular curve on either side. Some other things which are required can also be calculated on the basis of simple geometry of uh, this diagram. Now, a few things which we can remember here is that uh, the very first thing which it says regarding the minimum length of the curve and this minimum length of the curve should be 150 meters if the deflection angle is 5 degrees and at that the radius which is being talked is actually 1720 meters. So, when we say that uh, there is a deflection delta, so this is going to be the length divided by r and this r is <coughs> 1720 meters. So, that is how we are going to get those values and the another thing is as you keep going on reducing this de deflection angle. So, if uh, the deflection angle has been like this, so you get a curve in this form, but if the deflection angle becomes reduced, so the curve length is going to increase and that is where the length should be increased by 30 meters for each 1 degree decrease in the deflection angle and that is how it keeps going on easing out the things. And for a deflection angle of less than 1 degrees, no curve is required to be designed. So, that is an another thing. It means now you are in more or less flatter conditions and when you are traversing that, that when you say you means you are as a driver you are traversing that, then it is going to be quite comfortable and easy drive. The radius of the curve is to be decided on the basis of the very first thing the design speed, second the rate of super elevation which is going to resist the centrifugal force and the coefficient of friction in the lateral direction that is the another thing which is to be taken into consideration to resist the skidding. So, that means you are going to look at V E. So, this is defined as V, this one is defined as E and this coefficient is being defined as F. So, if you consider these things then these are going to be the parts which needs to be taken care of. Now, when you are talking about a case that you have a circular curve and you have super elevated at a rate of E and therefore, it is going to control the centrifugal force and the effect of the centrifugal force, then probably it is fine, but if say it is not being done then what happens? So, in the subsequent slides what we are going to talk about is that sort of a changeover. So, to understand that changeover the very first thing which we should understand is what is super elevation here. Now, super elevation is nothing but this is basically the raising of the edge. So, raising of edge of carriageway with respect to other edge. So, here what you can see is that say if I say this is an inner edge and this is outer edge. So, the outer edge has been raised by a value E here. This is the total super elevation by which it is being raised and this has been found out on the basis of the rate of super elevation and this has been found out on the basis of the width of the carriageway and the width of the carriageway if you see that this width of the carriageway has been shown by a denoted number b. So, that means it is going to be in this form. So, when we say it is e and b what comes out to be is that this e is in meter per meter and this b is in meter. So, you get a value as e into b is going to give you nothing but capital E. So, uh, this is one thing which we are trying to do. Now, at what particular angle shall we super elevate it or rotate the carriageway with respect to say the pivot point which is probably taken at this location is what we are trying to see and that is what is the super elevation being done on this. So, this super elevation which is provided here is going to take care of the centrifugal force
and this centrifugal force as you can see this is the outer side. So, it is acting in the outward direction. Okay. So, this is what we are trying to talk about with respect to a simple condition where this is not being done and you have a flatter surface. So, in that case if either this is being done or it is not being done two things may happen based on the this curve which is having a radius r or the vehicle which is moving with the speed v. So, this if you talk about these two things it means now you have four combinations and what are those four combinations that the carriageway is not super elevated, but you have a case of a skidding or overturning or the carriageway has been super elevated, but again you have a case of a skidding and overturning. So, let us go one by one. Let us take out the first case where the carriageway is not super elevated. So, you have a flat carriageway and there is a vehicle on it which is moving with a speed say capital V kilometers per hour. There is a centrifugal force which is acting in the outward direction as you can see this is a outer side and this is the inner side of the curve. We have two wheels. So, there is a wheel A and the wheel B and at this wheel A and wheel B there is a reaction which is coming from the bottom is R A and R B. The weight of the vehicle is W which is acting vertically downwards okay. and this is the point which is center of gravity and this is at a height h from the surface of the carriageway. So, we are looking at this thing. So, the various factors which are going to be now discussed have been defined P is the centrifugal force, W is the weight which is acting downwards and it is nothing but it is m into g where m will be the mass of the vehicle and g is the acceleration due to gravity and this acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square or roughly taken as 10 meter per second square either of the case can be there. R A and R B they are reactions at a wheel A uh, wheel B, F is the coefficient of friction between the wheel and the pavement in the lateral direction as being shown here. Height h is there which is the height of the center of gravity of the vehicle above the surface. Now, when we are looking at uh, this skidding case and when the carriageway is not being super elevated, now let us see that how the various forces which are there they can be correlated with each other. So, when we talk about this centrifugal force which is acting outwards, now there is a frictional force which is acting in the inward direction and this frictional force and these, these two are going to be equated. So, P is equals to F multiplied with R A plus R V because this is the total reaction which is coming through the wheels. Now, if you look at the vertical case, so this is the case when the things have been correlated parallel to the carriageway. Now, if you go perpendicular to the carriageway, so if you are perpendicular to the carriageway, then what you have is W R A and R V and therefore, R A plus R V is equals to W and this W is equals to M G. So, that is what we are writing here. Now, this centrifugal force P, this can also be defined if this vehicle is moving with the speed V meter per second, then this is M V square divided by R, where R is the radius of the circular horizontal circular curve. So, when you have these values then in this case what you are going to get is m v square divided by r c is equals to f into m into g. Okay. So, if I am putting it as r c here, so your m goes out and what you are left with if you are writing this equation in terms of finding the speed then v is equals to under root of f multiplied with g multiplied with r c. Now, here what you can see is that f and g they are constant. So, f is being defined as 0.15 and g is say 9.81 meter per second square. So, these are the constant values. So, v is directly going to be proportional to r or under root value of r in this case. So, it means as you are going to increase the radius then it is going to improve upon the speed with which the vehicles can move on this and therefore, 
you are going to have a case where the skidding may not take place. So, this particular value which has come out of this equation is the skid control speed on a section which is not super elevated which is flat and it is correlating the things with respect to the radius. So, if you look at here that what you found is this there is an example where the r is being given as 600 meters then limiting speed of the vehicles has to be identified for a case of no skidding f is being given as 0.15 and acceleration due to gravity g is being given as 10 meter per second a square going with the same equation which we have got as v is equals to under root of f into g into r c. What we get is if we input the values here it comes out to be 30 meters per second or 108 kilometers per hour. That means if the speed on this section is being capped is up to 100 kilometers per hour then there is no skidding of the vehicles taking place. But if the speed is going to be more than this then there is all possibility of a skidding taking place. So, let us see another example where the vehicles are moving at a speed of 65 kilometers per hour. So, here the speed is being given to us and we have to look at the that minimum radius of the circular curve if it is being provided then there is no possibility of a skidding taking place and therefore again we have the values of f and g being given as 0.15 and 10 meter per second square respectively. So, when we go with this equation v is equals to under root of f into g into r c and convert it into r c then it becomes v square divided by f into g and when we put the values here. So, this is because the speed is being given as kilometers per hour. So, it is being converted into meter per second. So, this is meter per second and divided by 0.15 into 10. So, what we get is 217.33 meters. So, it means if the radius of the curve of the section is being capped more than around 220 meters then there is no chance of a skidding. So, this is how we can go ahead. Now, let us look at the overturning case. Now, in the case of overturning again we are talking about the flat one. So, you have an outer edge you have p is equals to m v square divided by r c there is f w and all. Now, when overturning is taking place because of this, so there is a possibility of a movement in this form and if this happens then what will happening is that the contact between the tire at a, a is not going to be there. So, your vehicle is in some this position in this form. So, this is A condition, this is B condition. So, at this A when the contact is not there therefore, R A is going to become equals to 0 and the R B is going to take up the effect of all of the load of the vehicle. So, A will lose the contact, the effect of weight of the vehicle will come on wheel B. Now, considering that the distance between the wheels is B, so we say that this particular distance is B and we take the moment at the center of the two wheels. So, this is the center, so we are taking the moment here. So, if you are taking it here, so what happens is P is going in this direction, R is going in this direction and R B is going in this direction. So, they are P and R A are in the same direction and R B is in the opposite direction. So, what we get is P into H is plus R A into B by 2 is equals to R B into B by 2. This is the parent equation which comes out. Now, when we are talking about a case that there is a overturning, so when this overturning is there, so this is becoming equals to 0. So, R A is equals to 0 here. So, now what happens is that whole of the load is going to be there on this. So, this is R B is going to have all of this particular load and uh, P is still remains as M V square divided by R C. So, M V square divided by R C into H and uh, R A has gone equals to 0. So, in the previous equation, so this R A has gone equals to 0. So, you are get it P into H is equals to R B into B by 2. Now, putting P and R B here what we get M V square by R C into H is equals to M into G into B by 2 and this translates into V is equals to under root of G into B into R C divided by 2 H. So, this gives you the control speed now. So, that the vehicles does not overturn under the effect of the centrifugal force on a, this flat carriageway. And what another thing which we can see here is that V is correlated with R C directly. It is also correlated with the, uh, the distance between the wheels as B and it is inversely correlated with the 
height of the CG above the surface. So, if uh, we keep going on reducing this height then it means we are going to improve upon the V and that is where in the formula F1 case and all you have the very low height of the vehicles and that helps them in achieving a uh, very high speed. Let us look at our example again. So, you have a radius of the curve as RC 400 meters. We have to calculate the limiting speed of the vehicle so that there is no possibility of overturning. For that F is being defined as 0.15, G is defined as 10 meter per second square. The center to center or the track distance B is being defined as uh, 1.586 and the height of the CG above the pavement H is defined as 0.851 meters. So, these are the given values. So, let us look at the equation for the control speed which we have derived which is under root of G into B into RC divided by 2 H and when we input the values here then what we get is we get 61.05 meter per second or 219.78 kilometers per hour. So, that is the speed which can be there. So, hence there is no chance of overturning on this particular section as usually all of the vehicles when we talk about they are driving at a speed much lower than 220 kilometers per hour unless or until they are in a some formula F1 race etcetera. So, that is how we are going to have a safer condition. Another example is here. Now, in this particular example what we have been given is that the vehicles are moving on a curve with a speed so of uh, 80 kilometers per hour calculate the limiting value of radius of the curve so that there is no possibility of overturning on this curve take coefficient as 0.15 acceleration due to gravity is 10 meter per second square b again as 1.586 meters and h again as 0.851 meters. So, now we are transforming our equation of v is equals to under root g into b into rc divided by 2 h. So, as to calculate this rc and that becomes rc is equals to v square into 2 h divided by g into v. So, when we are again input the values here then what we get as an rc is that uh, we are getting 52.99 meters. Hence, if the radius of the curve shall be more than 55 meters to reduce the chance of overturning on the section but then this 55 meter is related to the values of V and H. So, as the values of B and H will be changing of course, these are also going to be different. Now, let us come to a super elevated case. Now, in the case of super elevated case what you see is as I said that there is a rate of super elevation with which we have got a total super elevation as E. Now, if this happens then the total way in which all of these forces which are acting on this particular uh, condition are going to reform and that is what we are going to see. Now, considering that m is the mass of the vehicle, v is the speed of the vehicle in meter per second. So, that is a small v we are considering, rc is the radius of the curve in meters, theta is the inclination of the carriageway with the horizontal which is defining basically the rate of super elevation and P is the centrifugal force and this P centrifugal force is being given by m v square divided by R c. So, if you are looking at this and the further if we talk about other values also like first of all w is the weight of the vehicle, b is the width of the carriageway, r a is the reaction of the inner wheel. So, I have a here and b here and therefore, this is R A and this is R B which is going to be there. F is the coefficient of lateral friction being shown here, E is the total super elevation and already I have defined that is small e is the rate of super elevation in meter per meter. Now, once we have all of these forces which are acting here, now let us transform these forces with respect to the carriageway orientation or perpendicular to the carriageway orientation. So, when we have to get into the skidding or when we have to get into the overturning then that is what we have to talk about. So, what we can do is that we can discuss about this particular uh, case maybe in the next lecture because otherwise we will not be able to complete in the given time. So, we will be stopping here and we will be resolving all these forces with respect to the parallel to the carriageway and perpendicular to the carriageway. And then we will see that how the equation comes out to be for the control speed which should be there in the super elevated case for the 
non-skating condition. Till then, thank you and goodbye.